You know what time it is, it's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richard, good to be with you. We got a whole lot of show today. My contributor breaking down news of the day, none other than Senator Nina Turner. Uh, former Ohio State Senator, TYT contributor, and Albert Eisenberg will be my debate guest for the bullpen. Voting rights and the filibuster will be top of the discussion. Let me bring you to the state of Georgia, a county called Houston County. It's spelled Houston, but it's Houston. In Houston County, a sheriff's deputy decided to basically write something extremely insane about Ahmaud Arbery. Remember now, this is a cop. A Georgia sheriff's deputy in middle Georgia has been suspended without pay, pending termination after calling murder victim Ahmaud Arbery a criminal on social media. In addition to labeling the slain jogger and young man, as a criminal, he is accused of writing, he still got the death penalty. Now, let me show you the graphic. Let me show you his social media graphic along with his picture, okay? Paul Ernan said, and I quote, that criminal Aubrey still got the death penalty though. That's what he said, he has been suspended. Now there are many who are actually defending him. There are many who are saying, well, does he not have the freedom of speech? What happened to freedom of speech in America? I'm going to break all of that down. I'm going to break it all down. So you have a police officer who is supposed to be on the side of what? The administration of justice. They are law enforcement agents. They are supposed to stand up for justice. In this case, as tragic as it was, at the end of that trial, justice was served. The people who committed murder were arrested. They were tried by their peers, due process in play, and they were convicted by a jury of their peers. Law enforcement agents should be okay with the process of law enforcement, right? Not when it doesn't fit their narrative. When it does not fit their narrative, they are now antithetical, adversarial, opposite of law enforcement. Especially when you have a white man who kills a young black man guy. All of a sudden, law enforcement is not law enforcement, is whatever your opinion is. So let me take it to Houston County. Houston County Deputy Paul Erhan commented on the Macon Outlet's Facebook post, Macon is a city in middle Georgia, about the recent sentencing of Aubrey's killers, Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, and William Bryan. The deputy replied, that criminal Aubrey still got the death penalty though. Now remember, this was an active deputy, policing, using taxpayer dollars, likely discriminating against other people of color, okay? January 7th, those three men were handed down life sentences for their roles in the 25 year old's death. The McMichaels both received life sentences with no possibility of parole plus an additional 20 years. Brian, a McMichael's neighbor was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 30 years. And the way he looks, he's gonna die in prison himself. So all of them are gonna die in prison. Uh, judge Timothy Wamsley, who was a, a stand-up judge, last of a dying breed, stated at sentencing, Ahmaud Arbery was then hunted down and shot and he was killed because individuals here in this courtroom took the law into their own hands. Despite deleting the comment back to the deputy, despite deleting the comment, screenshots have been shared across social media, landing in the Houston County Sheriff's Office. Over the weekend, the Sheriff's Office launched an investigation. And on the morning of Monday, January 10th, decided to suspend Erhan without pay pending termination. Now, once again, remember when I told you that there are people saying, wait a minute, this deputy has freedom of speech. I may not agree with what he said. You know how they try to contextualize their racism, but he does have the freedom to have his opinion. No, he doesn't. Let me bring you to the code of conduct for Houston County deputies. Page five, four A. 
is what he signed for employment. Page 54 a says, an officer must at all times on and off duty conduct himself herself in a manner which does not bring discredit to the department or county. He signed it, this is what he signed per employment with the county. He also signed page 54 b Page 54 b says, conduct unbecoming of an officer shall include that conduct which has a tendency to destroy public respect for employees and confidence in the department. Boom, he signed that, get him the hell up out of here. We're talking about, we need to wait on his termination. He should have been terminated on the spot. Um, as I said, some believe that his freedom of speech had been violated. Uh, the man has a right to his opinion. Why should some people be denied their right to express themselves because they work in certain areas, wrote uh, Will Maddox, who is a supporter of this deputy who will soon be fired. Here's the reality, certain jobs, government or non-government, when you get hired, you sign a document. That document is your contract. It says, here are the rules for this agency. You agree to those rules, you put your signature there. It's your employee handbook. When you violate it, it can be grounds for termination, period. It's amazing to me that individuals who are in the job of enforcing responsibility don't want it. Senator, what are your thoughts here? The people who are defending this deputy are conflating the issues. One of these yeah. things don't belong, that is what is going on and so he he will have the opportunity to have real freedom of speech in a little bit <laughs> right and when he gets fired he can be out there free and be free and and give all the speeches that he wants to i for one would want the this uh department to investigate any and all arrests that he was involved in because yeah. it is very clear that he has a bias against black people and maybe other people of color maybe other groups as well, but it's clear in this case that there is a bias. And what do you always say, Doc? Culture trumps policy. Policy. Every single time. And That's this right. is what this is about. He's not the only one. That's right. In that Very well said. Yeah. All right, we'll see. We're going to continue to follow it, but you're right. Uh, they need to start looking at some of his other rest, especially if the only witness was him and the defendant happened to be a person of color. Matt Gates, all right, the guy who's being investigated for, for trafficking children, the guy who still has significant power in the Republican Party, that Matt Gates. Well, his ex girlfriend testified. Uh oh. Matt Gates has an ex girlfriend. She testified in the federal trial against him. It's the grand jury part of the investigation. This happened on Wednesday. This is about his possible sex trafficking crimes. The ex-girlfriend whose name is being withheld by NBC News to respect her privacy has been in talks for months with prosecutors about an immunity deal. Well, damn, if you need an immunity deal, that means you've committed a crime. That's what that means. So it looks like her boyfriend, Matt Gates, at the time, talked her into a criminal situation, and she needs immunity now. Under a possible deal, she would avoid prosecution for obstruction of justice in return for testifying in the investigation into whether Gates in 2017 had sex with a 17 year old female for money, and whether months later he and others violated a federal law prohibiting people from transporting others across state lines. Uh, to engage in prostitution. To recap, Gates is being investigated for three crimes. I wanna remind you of those three crimes. Sex trafficking of at least one 17 year old, violating the MAN Act, that's the M-A-N-N Act, which prohibits taking women um, across state lines for prostitution and obstructing justice as well. Those are your three, more may be added. Gates says this is a witch hunt. Okay, here's the background on his relationship with his ex. The ex girlfriend was in an open relationship with Gates in 2017 and 2018. And remember, Gates is the one 
who speaks against open relationships. That's a side note. He was in an open relationship in 2017 and 2018 and allegedly discussed other women he was involved with. Once again, we have these reports from members of Congress who said he routinely would show pictures of women he was involved with to them, okay? According to three friends of the former couple, she allegedly went with Gates and a number of other young women and friends of the congressman in 2018 on a trip to the Bahamas. A trip that is also under scrutiny, CBS News and Politico previously reported. There may be a pay to play scheme involved. After the investigation began, Gates spoke with his ex-girlfriend in a three-way call with yet another woman who was cooperating with federal investigators at that point and was secretly recording the call. According to two sources familiar with the case. It's on that call that Gates is suspected of obstructing justice, which federal prosecutors are investigating according to law enforcement sources. Gates met his former girlfriend through former associate Joe Greenberg. Remember that guy, he was the tax guy in Florida. Greenberg faces a series of charges, including sex trafficking of a minor. All right, investigators have requested Mr. Gates, former girlfriend have asked her about any sexual relationship that the minor may have had with Mr. Greenberg and Mr. Gates. And whether the girl received money or material goods like meals, drugs and hotel rooms in exchange. Multiple people have told investigators that Mr. Gates former girlfriend is one of several women who met Mr. Greenberg through the website Seeking Arrangement. Which describes itself as a place where wealthy people find attractive companions and treat them to gifts and cash. Mr. Greenberg then introduced these women to Mr. Gates, who often has sexual relationships with them, the witnesses have said. Legal experts say the ex-girlfriend's testimony is an essential step prosecutors would take before charging Gates and that it signals Federal prosecutors may be close to indicting the congressman. Any criminal charges against a sitting member of Congress would have to be approved at the highest level of the Justice Department. Matt Gates is going to the pokey, okay? It's going to the pokey, it's a matter of time, all right? Uh, Senator Turner, I mean, this is all dirty stuff here, a whole lot of it. Yeah, it is, I mean, you summed it up. These charges, are, if the investigation substantiates all of these allegations against this man, the book should be thrown at him. And they, I mean, he's not ashamed because he's still out there spouting out, thinking that he's above the law and that he hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah. So I hope they get him and throw like five, six books at this fool. Really. Yeah. And you got to look at the state of the Republican Party. Matt Gates, who has been accused of trafficking at least one child, is under federal investigation. There's a, a credible report of him being an avid cocaine snorter uh, and all kind of other stuff, right? And then that's just the criminal element. And then there's the reputation element um, of things that he has done and said that are antithetical to the progress of black folk, historically marginalized groups, etc. This guy still has significant power. He's one of the top five fundraisers in the Republican Party, still to this day. And it gives you an idea of what Republicans are in this moment in time, all right? The they are a reflection of him. Yeah, no, it's a lot of rot and decay mm -hmm. in today's Republican Party for sure. Yeah. All right. What if I told you that a police department takes forged forensic documents and they will bring you a document and say, hey, you see right here, your DNA matches. Plead guilty and we'll go light on you. But it's all a lie, it's all fake, it's all forged to coerce confessions from people who were innocent. But that's exactly what has happened in Virginia Beach. But Virginia Beach police use forged documents to link people's DNA to crimes they never committed. The outgoing attorney general announced this yesterday. Let me give you some background to this insanity. 
Virginia Beach police serve a city of about 450,000 people along the state's coast. Officers use fake reports purporting to be from the Virginia Department of Forensic Science. At least five times during interrogations between 2016 and 2020. I'm sure there's more, those are the ones we have for the record. The city said it ended the practice in May after conducting its own investigation, but called the tactic legal and they are technically correct, okay? Let me give you more insight to this. It should not be legal, but courts have determined that it is. The bogus pieces of paper included a seal and letterhead from the state agency, the AG's office said. In two instances, the documents included the signature of a fictitious employee from the department. And in at least one instance, a forged report was presented to a court as evidence, the AG's office said. The Attorney General, Mark Herring's office, did not say whether the use of the forged documents would invalidate any confessions that were obtained as a result or otherwise affect the cases in which they were employed. The strategy was discovered, that's what they call it, an interrogation strategy. Uh, But this was discovered last year after a prosecutor asked the Department of Forensic Science to provide a certified copy of a document that police falsely claimed came from the department. The AG's Office of Civil Rights launched an investigation and then proposed a conciliation agreement uh, to stop the practice and reform department policies. Let me say this, I don't give a damn that it's a Democrat who runs that office. And I don't care that you call yourselves the Office of Civil Rights, okay? You knew good and damn well what was going on. You knew the practice, you knew the culture, you turned the other way. And when stuff got hot, oh, now we are launching an internal investigation. And we have requested them to stop doing this, but it's legal. Remember, they put that caveat at the end of their statement. It's legal, Virginia Beach City Council agreed to the changes on Tuesday, according to the AG. They include an order from the police department mandating that all sworn personnel stop using fake certificates of analysis from the state agency. Detectives also must acknowledge and commit to following the order. The terms of the agreement will remain in effect for at least two years, the state said. Understand what they're doing now. They're saying, okay, we're gonna stop this this horrible practice does not represent who we are, we're gonna stop it for two years. And then we can start it back up again after two years. This is the game they're playing. The Office of Civil Rights will notify the people who are interrogated about the forged documents. Well, mighty big of them. Let's be very clear, there were people who have confessed to crimes they never did because they realized they had been set up. They believe the documentation, they believe the DNA evidence was real. And they know that if they go to trial and for some reason DNA evidence said you did it, damn it, you get more time. So they confessed, they confessed to crimes they never did. The systemic issue is this, nobody's really outraged in law enforcement that this happened. They're just simply playing as if it's wrong in the moment, it's wrong period. They're not even taking it seriously enough to stop the practice altogether. They're putting a moratorium on the practice for two years. This is why people say defund the damn police. Let's go to Senator Turner, insane. I mean, that moratorium tells us all that we need to know about the true character of this department. The city council should be outraged, the mayor should be outraged, the police department should be outraged. They should wanna police themselves, costing the taxpayers money because eventually that's what, what is going uh, to happen. Uh, this is a prime example of the lack of accountability and transparency, mm-hmm. Virginia Beach, here it is. And lastly on this point doc, there is a such thing as just laws and unjust laws. So just because it's legal, does not make it right. And by them putting that in their statement shows that they are all about covering their behinds. Very well said. And not doing the right thing. That's right, we're gonna stay on top of this because one is not just happening in the 
in the Virginia Beach city. It's not just happening there, it's happening in other jurisdictions. But we need people to bring awareness to it. We need people to say something about it. So if this has happened to you, you know someone this has happened to, make sure they contact this show. All right, we want to expose this practice and make it illegal in the United States of America. We have more on the other side is indisputable, stick and stay. What's happening, welcome back. Okay, we got a lot of show left. Let me remind everyone about the big homie, J.R. Jackson, the watch list, let's put that up. Okay, this is a big deal. That's starting January 24th, live weekdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. This is a 10 week test series on TYT. Find out what stories you should be paying attention to in news, politics, culture, current events, sports, and more. Here's what you need to do. One, watch it live. Number two, make sure you subscribe and follow at youtube.com forward slash watch list TYT at facebook.com forward slash Watch list TYT. Uh, you got to check out the impact um, on the the TYT website. So let me break this down, all right? Because the power of TYT comes from you. That's where it comes from. When you hear uh, Representative Cory Bush say to Jenk, "You gave me a platform," he's really saying it to you. He's saying it to you, to every single one of you, okay? Um, You have to look at the media outlets that would not cover AOC. They would not cover Jamal Bowman. They would not cover progressives who were running, not at first, but TYT did. TYT was there, they won, okay? Because of their policy, not popularity. Popularity came later. They covered them because they, they were right on the policies. TYT has been doing this for 20 years, I want you to check out TYT.com forward slash impacts, TYT.com forward slash impacts, because all of those stories, you're part of that, okay? All right, and don't forget Ray Actions with Ray Vanna right after Indisputable, twitch.tv forward slash TYT. It's a Twitch exclusive. All right, let's get it. Just Be Anti Racist says, Dr. Richie looking very dapper today, and Miss Nina Turner, need I say more? Uh, Ms. Nita always got it going on, fire, that's right. Colorado Blue Blazer responds and says, for Dr. Richard looking dapper, it's just another day ending in Y. I like that, I see what you did there. Lynn says, I'm sure those feelings didn't play out while he was doing his job as a sheriff. Uh, I am Sock says, somebody seriously needs to look at what's going on with Nestor. Uh, Mickey see the silver hair dragon, so forging official documents is legal. We know of all the many illegal tactics that the cops, judges, DAs, and prison guards use to convict innocent civilians. How many more legal tactics exist that we don't know about? Okay. All right, super chat. Um, Crab Baby Trump says, I bet that cop voted for Trump, just a hunch. Yeah. Chaplain Fred, aka Prayer Dragon. Hello, Doc and Mrs. Turner. Regarding cops, LA sheriffs here are showing their true colors. Ms. Turner, will you be running again? Do it for president in 2024. All right, so are you running again? Everybody's asking, are you running again, Senator Turner? Doc, I know everybody's asking and I love, love, love our viewers for just constantly lifting me up in that way. You know, as I've said, I'm keeping all my options on the table when it comes to 2022. Let's just, just focus on 2022. Keeping all of those options open, and so we shall see. Well, you know, we got your back if you do. You know that. Oh, I know y'all do. That's what Absolutely. I love about TYT. Absolutely, we Thank ride. You. Okay, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a In Sunday? You feel free. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life.
That's German engineer Karenicity right there. That thing hits different. The word uh, this particular Karen kept saying is Kanaki or Kanak. Let's put it up because I was able to find what this word means. It's a German word for people from German speaking countries with roots from Southeast Europe, the Near and Middle East, um, uh, North Africa. It is used as a derogatory word or derogatory slur. Let's put a picture of this particular Karen and all of her Karen glory. This is a reminder to everyone that Karenicity is a pandemic, is global. And we see the individual who is being um, cursed at and at the receiving end of this Karenicity. Well, that person held their cool, okay? Big ups to them for doing so. But this is a real social dynamic that permeates not only in the culture of America, but beyond. Senator, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, going we going ass backwards. I mean, that is really what is happening here. And she is so lucky, Doc. I mean, you and I always <laughs> qualify these things. Right, See, we ain't trying to promote violence. But damn. But if you spit at somebody, That's you assault. really do. Yeah, you, you, you wanna be slapped. I mean, you really do and put the word in front of it that I can't say on this family show. Yeah, and it also shows not only is Karenicity universal, but so is white supremacy. Right. She knew exactly what she was saying. It was very deliberate. It was all up in her being too, didn't she? Didn't she put her whole body into that? Oh, and then she came about, back. She was all about it. Yeah, it came and, back over and right. over again. And always comparing black folks to monkeys. These white folks gonna stop doing that. But you know, there was pseudoscience historically. And they all they would categorize us as a little higher than the apes. Yeah. So that's why they continue to do that. That's why I don't like King Kong Day, Doc. I I, I know. know. I know. It's tough for me. Like it. Let me tell you something. It's tough for me to watch even don't, movies don't like. I can't enjoy movies like Tarzan. I'm too woke for that. Tarzan, not that you're in the awareness. <laughs> like this white do. man swinging from trees in Africa. In seriously, Africa? he running things. In Come Africa. on, damn, now. we can't have nothing. We can't have. We Africa. can't have nothing. <laughs> And then all King right. Kong all up there. Don't even get me started. We need to do a whole show, Doc, about those, it's real though. You know, yeah, the movies, how we've been fed this stuff. We've all yeah. been socialized to feel a certain way about certain yeah. groups of people. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Uh, all right, whoa. I got something for everybody. Double dose. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel Back off! I'm going to tell there's an African American man threatening my life. Gucci's, come on. Get that out of here. I don't care. Gucci's, yes. shut up. Really, shut up. Oh, hey. Yeah, why? Why? You're, are you base her for now? All right, yeah, she's screaming the N word over and over again. Uh, she's actually a streamer. Um, her name is Gucci's, okay? There's more video. Here's what happened next. If you touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. You seem to be the more rational minded of the two. Get her the out of here. Get her the out of here. Get her the fuck out of here. Nobody can put their hand. I'm not going to drag her out of here. But Gucci's, we need to go. We're being asked to Stand up. Hey, let's go. Come out of here. Drink your beer and let's go. Oh my God, you're like really offended, aren't you? Yeah, so we're No, no, somebody doesn't like Racist. Uh oh. I'm real. I'm a. Oh my god, you're throwing. Guess what? Triggered by a word. No, it's not just a word. You. You're gonna get knocked out. You better walk where you're going. Let him go. Get out of here. 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 Get out
Hey, 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 Yeah, got caught up around the wrong white people, didn't you? Didn't expect that, did you? Thought you were protected. Well, since this particular streamer wants to be famous for being racist, who am I to get in the way of somebody's dreams? I'll put up the picture, there you go. See, my producers already knew I was going, all right? Gucci's is a streamer, wants to be known for being racist. Well, madam, you have achieved success. Senator Turner, this is what we're dealing with in these streets. Yeah, it's just all bubbling back up, Doc. I think if there's anything to these moments, it is just a not subtle reminder, like dead up in our face. Yep. That there are people still among us who harbor these kinds of feelings. And when she said it's just a word, you're offended by just the word. Girl, you better go on and get some history. That word was used to dehumanize, to humiliate, to whoop, to beat. To rape, you know, black folks. No, yeah. it's more than just the word that ought not ever come out of your mouth. And I guess she found out that night. You know, our dear late sister, Maya Angelou, had a poem about words being things. Come on. And how these things can stick to walls and they're yeah. tangible. Words are things, and words do stick, and words have meaning, and words have impact. Um, we got more on the other side, all right? It's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Always good to be with you all. Let me read some of these comments. I will read as many as I can. Uh, Just be anti-racist says, ugly comes in all forms, shapes, sizes, and languages. That's correct. Worst case scenario, Dragon says, oh my gosh, she's doing that at a bar. She looked wasted. Yeah, she was, um, she had liquid courage, yeah. But here's what I know, cuz I still got friends that get drunk around me. I haven't had her drink in about six years, all right? Uh, but my friends still drink. You know what none of them do? They don't all of a sudden magically become racist when they get drunk. You know why? Because they weren't racist before they started drinking, that's why. All right, uh, next TYT report to say she sounds like a heart monitor, I know. Uh, Pitchforks Dragon says, this concludes our test of the emergency broadcast system. <laughs> I mean, we almost ran out of the capability to beep her. It was insane. All right. You know, when you are in position to judge somebody, and judges are, that comes with a significant trust factor. And you should also be sensitive to the reality of other people. Like for example, if they are dying from cancer. Let me bring your attention to this particular judge who was extremely insensitive and wanted to give a man jail time because he had cancer and could not cut his grass. Here's the first part of the video. You have a ticket from August 2nd, 2021, 521 for Venus. <laughs> for failing to keep the fence, walkway, sidewalk, or alley free of weeds, trees, or other nuisance vegetation. With a first offense civil infraction, you can plead responsible, responsible with an explanation, or not responsible. <laughs> Explain what that I am a cancer patient, very old man. And I am a cancer patient. I was then very weak and this, sick. Uh, sick. See, uh, very weak. And this time of rainy season, I cannot look look after this thing. Be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> if I could give you jail time on this, I would. This is what happens when Karen becomes a judge. There's more. Here it is. Is it, ma'am, forgivable because my father is currently sick and we clean that Did after? You see that photo? It, yes. I am very sick, ma'am. That is shameful. 
Shameful. The neighbor should not have to look at that. The Karenicity in this judge runs deep. Let me give you some background to this story. This is a Michigan judge berated a 72 year old man who can barely damn breathe. He can barely breathe. He's a cancer patient and he failed to maintain his yard because of his cancer treatment to made him very weak, all right? Um, Burhan Shoudhury. Um, of Michigan could barely breathe as he explained the situation to that judge. The judge is Alexis G. Croft. That's the judge, all right? The man's son, Shabir Shoudhury, 33 years of age, who appeared with his father for the Zoom hearing of the 31st District Court, spoke up to clarify that his father was sick and that the property had already been cleaned up, all right? Property clean. Dutiful son comes in and says, Dad, I got you, I'm gonna take care of this. You still gotta go to court because that's how it works right here in this district. You go to court, the judge then says, you know, if I could if I could lock you up, if I could put you behind bars, I would. <clears throat> Why? Why? Why be that rude to someone in front of you for something that has already been taken care of and is actually minor? Um the guy had uh, lip node cancer and uh, just needed help, okay? This was not a complicated case before this judge. Um, he said weeds grew around outside of the parents house while he was gone. When he returned, he said his father told him that they received a ticket uh, for the weeds and, veg and vegetation. Uh, the younger said he was shocked by the judge's reaction to the situation. Naturally, anybody would be shocked if your 72 year old father who is barely able to breathe is threatened with jail time and berated like that by a judge over a hundred dollar damn ticket. But it goes to the sentiment of the judge. Let's put a picture up. You see, here's what the judge failed to realize. And by the way, this judge was appointed by Governor Rick Snyder. Uh, back in 2016 and then elected in 2018. Uh, this judge fails to realize that there's a community of people that support the 72 year old man. And I'm part of that community, you're part of that community, okay? They will continue to do this if they feel as if you're not connected to a community. Senator Turner, uh, you see what happened here. What are your thoughts about this judge? Yeah, I mean, my blood is boiling. That community should unelect her. Yep. <laughs> Number one, you know, her her lack of uh, sensitivity to this man's needs. A, a judge is supposed to mete out justice. That doesn't mean berate people, find them when they are at weak points in their lives. So she is shameful. Number two, you know, when I was at Cleveland City Council, we had grass cutting programs for mm -hmm. elders. That's right. Hello, somebody. That's right. I mean, where is the city council person? Mm -hmm. Help that elder. So elders, because we had elders that were visually impaired, hearing impaired, physically impaired. You just never know what people are going through. And then this man got cancer, but just just impaired or can't move the way that they used to. And some um, doc did not have relatives anymore. Like they were it. They the kids lived out of state. They didn't have sisters or brothers. They were that was yep. it. They needed community help. So we had grass cutting programs. And lastly, where the hell the neighbors at? Now I. One thing that judge did say that I kind of agree with Doc. Yeah, the neighbors don't have to be subjected to it. I get it, right? They have a right to look out and, and everything. However, neighbors, where's the neighborly love? Mm -hmm. If you see something out of order like that, and that's out of order, most normal caring people who care about the community don't just let their grass grow that high. Why don't y'all knock on the door and find out if something's going on? See and what's happening. That's right. Very well said and a great observation. Uh, there's a group in Atlanta called Street Groomers, founded by my dear friend, rest in peace, uh, Big Haroon. But these are former gang bangers, all right? Former gangsters yeah. who have all come together. And what they do is they walk children to the bus stop in the morning, they walk them home. They also clean up yards, they cut grass, and they paint houses. For the elderly at no cost. Look them up, streetgroomers.org. They did that because they wanted to be a solution for what local city council did not remedy.
I'm gonna take you to a video of a military officer punching an elderly man. Here it is. Come on, come on, do it again. Call the police, please. Call the police, oh my God, oh my God. Let me show you what led up to this. Here's the full video. Leave that lady alone. I am. Leave that lady alone. I just said I am, bitch. Walk away. Fuck the fire lady. None of you are going to do a move. You're not going to do a goddamn job. Crush all of you. Get the out of here. Shut up. Why don't you calm down? Are you one? Cool. I can get violent with you because you're a guy. The military officer has been arrested. Let's put up his uh, mugshot. Okay, I'm gonna give you some background. Keep that mugshot up. Uh, this happened last month when this man, Richard Suarez, 39 years of age, uh, knocked out Mr. Michael Pennington, who's 60 or older, um, who scolded him for his behavior leading up to that punch. Okay, uh, this encounter happened at a shopping center in LA. All right. According to the military officer whom you see, he was experiencing PTSD. That's what he says, okay? Um, the attorney says it doesn't excuse what happened, but he thought uh, his client was in, he thought his client felt he was in a combat zone. Uh, that's not what I see, I just, I see a guy just being who he is. Um, after the punch, this will happen after that. His wife came out of the store and found him parked some distance away shaking. She was afraid to make the drive to New Orleans with him. And ultimately his mother drove him to a VA hospital where he was admitted. Um, this is still what they call conduct unbecoming. Um, it is going to be interesting to see how this is dealt with, not only by the local officials, but also by the, um, by the US military. So uh, Senator Turner, Turner. Uh, I get it, PTSD is a very real thing. I'm sensitive to that. that, that's not my beef here. I literally see an argument and a guy who is continuing to be aggressive to multiple individuals. He walked away and then he walked back. At, at some point you have to know, even if you have a tendency to act a particular way because of what atmosphere you've been around, you still have to know when not to cross a line with somebody. Yeah, agreed. And maybe he was having a, a moment. Uh, maybe he was, and 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 I hate that he was having that moment. But his moment bubbled over into making other people's moments bad. And it was something that he said that really struck me when he said to the to the elderly gentleman, "I, I can hit you because you're a man." Yeah. Uh, something to that effect. Right. I mean, that just feeds into this toxic masculinity that that we're. Fed a steady diet of in, in this country. No, you can't put your hands on anybody unless it is in self defense. Right. And I didn't see anything. I mean, I don't know if I missed something. There were some other angles where he was in the position of defending himself. So he definitely went off. If it was a post traumatic stress disorder moment, I hope that he gets the help that he needs. But that yeah. was very unfortunate. Yeah, I'm with you 100% on that. <laughs> Let me. Bring your attention to somebody who's actually telling the truth on the Republican conservative side. They do not want voting rights for black people, anybody else. They don't want voting rights. And he's actually saying it. Here it is. You can take a gun, shoot somebody in the face. It's not hard. 
Sometimes it might even be fun if they're a godless commie. Now, what they're trying to do is sneak the COVID vaccine in your salads. I never had, I hate math. Somebody say amen. I, I think universal voting rights is one of the worst ideas this country has ever had. There are few things more worthy of coming under attack than universal voting rights. Voting ought to be a privilege reserved for those who are most competent and qualified. It's not a natural right. God did not imbue us all with some sort of sacred entitlement to participate in our national elections. The Bible certainly makes no mention of any such thing. So if it's not a natural right, which it emphatically is not, then it's a privilege that we grant. And it would be wise to consider a person's basic qualifications before granting it. We are under no moral obligation to allow hordes of stupid, bewildered, clueless zombies to flood the voting booth and cast their ballots in a state of ignorance and confusion, helping to steer this giant ship of a country right into one iceberg after another. So that's my position, which I state often and without apology. I, I am, I'm against voting rights, I don't like them. Yep, and I'm gonna state this without apology. I think you're racist as hell. Okay, and let me explain to you why, uh, Mr. Matt Walsh. Uh, you actually are being truthful about what you believe. I wish more Republicans would just say the way you're saying it. Because at least we can deal with them as they are without the trickery involved. But you are entitled to your opinion and I'm entitled to mine. And here's mine, you actually are connected to the sentiment of the founding fathers of this country. Because they did not want everybody voting, no. They wanted a particular class of people to be able to vote. They wanted white men who owned property. Now, I don't know about your financial situation, maybe you would have been included in that or not. But they only wanted white men that own property. That's bigoted, that's racist, that's sexist. You got all of that in one. And you are connected to that sentiment. Taxation, my dear brother, taxation without representation is what you are advocating. I have to pay taxes, every voter has to pay taxes. So you're telling me that we should pay taxes into the American governmental system, the structure of tax taxation, which is constitutionally mandated, but we should not all have the right to vote, only select individuals, as you said, the most competent and qualified. And I'm sure you want to pick what competency and qualification is. You're rooted in bigotry, racism and classism. You rather pick the voters because you're scared of the voters picking the politicians. It frightens you, but we coming. Senator, thoughts? Yeah, we ain't going nowhere. Doc, you hit the nail on the head. I just got my little look, check, check, check. <laughs> yeah, he, he trying to take us all the way back. Yeah, that's how the framers set up the country in the first place. And in order to form a more perfect union, mm -hmm. we have moved further and further away from that over the over the generations. But in this moment, from what is happening on the federal level with these damn fools not wanting to do away with the filibuster. Yeah, I said it, not wanting to do away with the filibuster to protect voting That's rights. Right. All, you know, where we're, they're being eroded on the state level. This, this dude is going all the way back, Dr. You hit the nail on the head. He is very yeah. much in line with the framers of this country. White land owning males, Anglo-Saxons, only people who had the right to vote for a very long time in this country. That's right, and based on that sentiment of the founding fathers, the majority of white men today would not be able to vote. They didn't have That's enough right. wealth, all right? Okay, That's it. so good to have you on the program as always. Tell people how they can follow you and check out your great work. Thanks Doc, it's always good to join you. At Nina Turner on Twitter, Nina Turner Ohio on the gram, Nina Turner on Facebook. And per usual, Doc, you are indisputable. Well, the feeling is mutual. Thank you, sister. Remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable. Welcome to Indisputable. I'm your host, Dr. Rashad Richard. We got a lot happening today. But what do we do on this show? We tell the truth. You know why we tell the truth? Because the truth is simply indisputable. Rashad, great to be here. Congratulations on the new show. And I gotta let everybody know that Rashad and I go way back. People still need health care, so I won't stop. People still need criminal justice systems reform throughout this country, so I won't stop. And you won't stop either.